All it took was three seconds. Every day when we're outside, we come across strangers. At a business meeting, college sports event, or especially in a networking event, we meet new faces. We take notice on some of them. With some, we dare to make a bond or make acquaintances while we never bother to talk to another part of the group. What made them be categorized inside our heads? And does this same judgmental procedure fall upon us too? And yes, it does fall upon. Ever thought about capturing the eye of your hidden crush? Come to the notice of your superiors in your job or win the helping hand of investors for your business? Succeeding or failing in those ventures have very little to do with anxiety and all it comes down to is a single theory and three seconds. Let me tell you the juicy stuff through a nice expedition. Researchers Nalini Ambadi and Robert Rosenthal at Harvard University wanted to test the powers of our snap judgments. They decided to look at students' perceptions of their professors. Our judgments of teachers should only be made based on their actual teaching content, not on their looks, behavior, or presence. However, this is not how we operate. For this experiment, Ambadi and Rosenthal showed muted 10-second video clips of professors teaching to outside participants, who rated the teachers on 15 dimensions of effectiveness, including warmth, optimism, and professionalism. The evaluators had to make judgments based entirely on nonverbal cues. Ambadi and Rosenthal looked at the results and wondered if they could change the ratings by shortening the clips, so they cut the clips from 10 seconds to 5 seconds. The ratings didn't change. Then they cut the clips from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. The ratings still didn't change. They concluded that we make a snap judgment in the first 3 seconds of meeting someone, and we rarely adjust it, even when we get more information. We decide if we believe someone, if we like someone, and if we trust someone before we've even heard them speak. The most interesting part of the study is Ambadi and Rosenthal took the ratings from each of these clips and compared them to the student evaluations of these same teachers after an entire semester of classes. Again, they were surprisingly similar. Teachers who got poor rankings from the three-second clips also got low rankings from students who took a semester's worth of classes. We know for sure every teacher above did hours of practicing their teaching methods and went through the best and most effective teaching materials and provided them for students. But according to the above results, what mattered was how effective teachers are within the first few seconds of walking into the room and engaging with the students. And the same thing happens to you when you enter a room. Intimidated by the speed of the first impression? Don't be! This is actually good news, because if it takes only a few seconds to convince someone you're worth talking to, we only need to win that few seconds and the rest can be a cakewalk. You can see the first impression to hack an entire interaction. First impressions are a survival mechanism. When you meet someone new, our brain decides, is this someone we want in our life or should we distance ourselves from them? Ever heard of fight or flight response? It's another survival mechanism. Here, we try to answer three basic questions about a person during the first few moments of interaction. First question, are you a friend or a foe? We're thinking, darling, you gotta let me know. Should I stay or should I go? And our brain kicks in. Second question, are you a winner or a loser? This is the confidence check. Third question, are you an activist or a bystander? A dedicated person, whether that person should be on your team or not. If someone passes all three tests in our favor, we trust them and tend to like them. This method is the program that's running inside of the heads of others as well as when you meet them. Following studies have been recorded in Captivate the Science of Succeeding with People book written by Vanessa Van Edwards. So let's hack the system! Skill 1. Use your hands. The top TED Talkers use a very specific mechanism to instantly build trust with their audience. Hand gestures. The least popular TED Talkers used an average of 272 hand gestures. The most popular TED Talkers used an average of 465 hand gestures. That's almost double. Temple Grandin, Simon Sinek, and Jane McGonigal topped the hand gesture charts with over 600 gestures 
in just 18 minutes. This effect isn't specific to TED Talks. Human resource departments claim that job candidates who used more hand gestures in their interviews were the one who got hired more likely. Why do hand gestures have such an impact? Hands show intention. Think back to caveman days for a moment. When a stranger approached our caveman ancestors, the best way to tell if the stranger had good or bad intentions was to look at their hands. Were they carrying a rock or a spear? Even though in modern times we aren't often subjected to physical harm, this survival mechanism remains. This is why in most cultures we shake hands as a way of greeting, and why the first thing police officers yell at criminals is, get your hands up! When someone can see your hands, they feel more at ease and are more likely to befriend you. This is an easy one to implement. When you walk into a room or are waiting to meet someone, keep your hands out of your pockets. Don't let desks, purses, or laptops block your hands who are your friend makers. First, you have your hands visible, and then you go in for the perfect handshake. Never ever skip a handshake. Don't replace it with a wave or a high five. Why? The moment we have skin-to-skin -to -skin touch with someone, our body produces something called oxytocin. Oxytocin is the connection hormone. When you shake hands with someone, your body produces the exact hormone you both need to build trust, and then a deeper connection. Skill number two, be a winner. Guess the answer to this question. What is the most influential factor for professionals who want to earn the trust of potential clients? A, being an established, proven expert. B, having a high degree of confidence. C, demonstrating advanced expertise in their area. D, having a well-respected reputation. What did you guess? If you guessed B, having a high degree of confidence, you're correct. According to a major study done by Carnegie Mellon University, a professional's confidence is more important than that professional's reputation, skill set, or history. Why is confidence so important? As humans, we're constantly looking for winners. We like to have winners on our team. We like to be associated with winners. We like to be led by winners. Researchers Jessica Tracy and David Matsumoto wanted to know if there are universal winner and loser behaviors. To do this, they compared how Olympic athletes behave after they win or lose a race. Winners typically take as much space as physically possible frequently called power posing. This is when we raise our arms over our head, expand our chest, and tilt our head up. Losing athletes take up as little physical space as possible, also known as low power posing. Defeated athletes usually bow their head, slump their shoulders, and pin their arms tightly to their sides. Like athletes, when we're proud, we want people to notice us, so we take up space. When we feel defeated, we try to deflect attention by taking up as little space as possible. But in everyday life, we can't act like Olympic winners. Instead, we can use similar stances which bring out the essence of a winner's posture. So whenever you're talking to people, keep your shoulders down and back. Aim your chin, chest, and forehead straight in front of you or slightly up. Keep space between your arms and torso. Make sure your hands are visible. Sometimes we accidentally go into loser body language when we check our phones. This is a terrible thing to do. It makes you distant from the people who are ready to engage with you. If you want to check your phone, just do it like a winner. Pivot the phone out and up to align with your eye level. Stand like a winner. Look like a winner. Interact like a winner. Skill three, engage with eye contact. After someone passes our first two tests, we regard that person as both trustworthy and winning-minded. Hence, we now want to know if they should be on our team or not. This is the differentiator between a good first impression and a great one. We like people who are trustworthy and confident, but if we don't think that they'll respect us, we won't have a strong connection or bond with them. So, how do you communicate your desire for an alliance? The best TED Talkers act much like a mother who's doting on her children when engaging with their audience. They make eye contact with specific faces in the crowd and speak directly to them, 
making everyone watching feel like they truly matter. One of the most powerful examples of eye contact is in a video done by activist Jay West and her team at Liberators International. Their organization stated a mission on their website. We aim to coordinate, record, and distribute monthly global acts of freedom. One of their most popular videos on YouTube is called The World's Biggest Eye Contact Experiment. In this video, Liberators asked strangers to participate in one minute of sustained eye contact with another stranger. We were definitely nervous going into it. It's quite confronting to stare at a stranger in the eye and allow yourself to be vulnerable," said West. As West concluded, holding eye contact with another person can evoke many feelings. It calls on true courage to trust another human being. Why do you think eye contact is so powerful? It produces oxytocin, the chemical foundation for trust. We're programmed to interpret it as a nonverbal signal of goodwill. When you like someone, you look at them more. In most cultures, to build a good report with another person, your gaze should meet theirs about 60 to 70 percent of the time. This will also cause them to begin to like you. While you're maintaining eye contact, remember, notice their eye color. Don't look over their head to scope out the scene. Hold eye contact for 60 to 70 percent of the time. The triple threat that you learned today is a tool that you can turn to when your nerves are high. It will both simplify the process of making a good first impression, once you understand the science, it's not so big and scary, and that will allow you to relax by living more in the moment. You have only a few seconds to make a killer first impression. Take the maximum out of it. Confirm trust by showing your hands. Be a winner with your stance. Use the right amount of eye contact. This will lead the way for you to win anyone's trust, attention, and also likeness. I hope you've gained something useful for yourself from watching this video. Let's keep walking on the journey of rediscovering attitude and shape it to our development. Thanks for watching and let's meet again with another productive video.